Diana asks Kibaji. So, Bicholafant. Um, Bicholafant. Uh, how are you all doing? All right. Um, so uh, today, uh, first of all, before I start um, my little vlog or whatever, I'd like to say uh, Adi tisale zip mosiane. Tisale zip mosiane. And uh, that's to Sa'adi, uh, my mum. So, mum, happy birthday. So, my mum's birthday today. You know, uh, wish me daurora because I'm, I'm going to try to make her uh, a nice uh, cake. A nice cake. Wish me luck. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Speaking of celebrations, uh, that's what today's topic is about. Uh, it's agaznie, celebrations, uh, parties. And uh, the word agazni is both a noun and a verb. A noun because it means party, celebration, festival. And the verb is... Um, is to party and to celebrate so yes and to honor is uh, to lag to lag to honor to respect so anyway uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about a few things uh, so um, some uh, agazni verdase that's more written words, so I guess agazni vide, spoken word. Flat, flat is to dance. Flat, because some parties you dance. And uh, vesto, vesto is music, you know, music's playing at a party, you know. Jo vesto is a song, or, and it also means to sing, so. And some uh, agazni have uh, pingoro, pingoro, uh, bonfires, big fires, bonfires. And they like to flat hawal, dance around them. And some parties uh, have uh, nadela, nadela, uh, a gift, you know, like you can give somebody a gift, nadela, and actually nadela is both a noun and an adjective, and the adjective version means rare, because gifts are rare, and there are a bunch of um, a gaznier uh, that serve belke, belke, uh, alcohol. Sometimes, you know, uh, dorf belke, you know, for children's parties and, you know, those who don't drink. So the dorf belke, without alcohol, and belke, you know. Uh, and a popular one is tulbuju. Tulbuju, uh, wine. Wine is popular drink. You know, if if not assorted belka, belke. All right. So now some types of festivals. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Zitmosjane, Zitmosjane, birthday, a uh, birthday party. And now among the Gerudos, the uh, Vatifia Zitmosjane is a big occasion. <laughs> you know, it's perhaps not as big as maybe his presentation to the tribe or his coronation, 
but it certainly is a heck of a celebration. So, and uh, I, I'll go into that. So, um, now the only birthday that's a huge deal, my birthdays, they're a pretty big deal, but a huge deal is the king's birthday because he's the firstborn male every hundred years or first male who was born every hundred years. So, yeah. And uh, it's made a national holiday. And whenever the living king celebrates the anniversary of his birth. So it's, it's a national holiday if he's living. If he's not, no. But I'll, I'll go into succession, you know, until the next king is born. But... For now, we're talking about birthdays, so. And, and why not, you know? Like, every cycle, year, you know? Give them something to celebrate. Have some fun. You know, not much to do except guard the fortress. And so, like, once a year kind of thing, have a birthday. You know, a, a day to, you know, celebrate, enjoy life. And be thankful for the sand goddesses Salemasu blessings. Salemasue. That's plural. Salemasu blessing. Salemasue blessings. And like the king's birth, a huge bonfire is lit, Pingoro. And the festivals are held. And as I said, it's not as large as the one that was held the day he was presented to the to the tribe as the new prince or Eri, Eri. And uh, an another big celebration, uh, it's happened, you know, it's uh, the Zitmus Juva Shinto Tif. <laughs> Zitmus Juva Shin Tif. Cholzimaf Mathrelse. And that's the actual birth of the king. So, and uh, it's, and what it is, is it's actually celebrated after he's born, uh, right after his mother recovers from childbirth. Make it a lot more fun for her, you know, and, uh, you know, and she gets congratulated for giving birth to the male child who will rule over the tribe when he gets older and maybe bring good fortune. So that's that's king the kings, yeah. Birth and birthday celebrations, subsequent subsequent birthday celebrations afterwards. So now, how do common Gerudo celebrate? You're probably wondering. Well, yeah, they well, they aren't as large as the kings. And definitely not as large as maybe the day they were presented to the tribe after they were born. So, but they're still fun. You know, they, they still get to celebrate their anniversary of their first light day, which is what Zit Mus Yane translates to. First light day. Zit Mus Yane. First light day. Now, for children... Like many of us in real world, they'll invite over a couple friends, uh, you know, to their living quarters, play, have, you know, have share some sweets with them, and this usually would take place after lunch that's held in the mess hall, and the other Gerudos might make a toast to the birthday girl, you know, even if it's the daughter of in another Garuda, they'd probably make a toast. And uh, the sweets that would be served, usually some sort of confection made with honey or milk. And as I said, honey's a little easier to get a hold of than milk, but still, you know, and, or, you know, if both the Adila mother or birthday girl is skilled at confectionery. However, if not, they can always just ask the fortress cook 
you know, give them a couple rupees and say, hey, can you make something up real quick for us? And she'll do it. And now because of the rarity of wheat to make flowers, used for breads when it's available, so it's not it's not really used for anything but breads. Yeah, it's not used to make cakes or anything, so a lot of the sweets are gluten free by nature, flourless, no yeast, because like I said that stuff's reserved for like breads for the whole tribe. And so that's that's kinda like think of like a pavlova. It's like pavlova kind of thing, except it's not made with the meringue's not made with sugar, it's made with like honey, so and it does work. It is a thing. Haven't personally tried it, but it is actually a thing. Or can be. It's not vegan though. Especially with the egg whites. The egg whites, hands down, it's definitely not vegan. But gluten free, yes. So now if the child loves to go on adventures, they can just take their friends on a hike. And uh, the birthday girl's Adila, mother, uh, can serve as the chaperone. And they watch the sunset, you know, from atop the red canyons after the hike. And if they're a bit older, they can stay up a little later because you know, older girls can stay up and they can stargaze. Jesasu arpva uma etere. Jesasu arpva uma etere. Watching, watching, at the, looking at the stars, excuse me, looking at the stars. Watch, look, same word. And at least once in their lives, they must visit the desert Colossus to give thanks to the sand goddess. But it's not a required birthday activity, but it, it would be a good day to get it out of the way and, you know, it, you know, it might become important for later birthdays and usually about when they reach the age of 20 or something like that, you know, give a time to give thanks to the sand goddess for her Salema Sue for a long and healthy life. And that's why it would be important is because they survived 20 or more years and they're very thankful for her blessings. And then when they return from their pilgrimage, uh, they can gather a group of their best eshai and like their younger counterparts, share a special suite. And you know, they can also go for a hike, you know, but this, you know, they don't need uh, Adila to be the chaperone, but the, but, uh, the girl's Adila is welcome to come if she'd like. I do know that uh, if it were me, I would totally be inviting my Adi. My Adi would so be coming with me because, yeah, adventures. And of course, you know, they can stay up later, like I, you know, like I said, than the younger ones. And they also, uh, another thing they can do is they can get a uh, Zaizaju Tulbuju bottle of wine. And they go back to birthday girl's place and they just, you know, they sip it while gossiping, you know, talking or even talking about their scores at the horseback archery yard that day. Like, yeah, you know, I hit the middle of the target. The horseback archery. Yeah, and, and I won 20 rupees. It was so awesome, you know. And, and gossip about, about Hyrulean boys in town, you know. But that's, that's if you're older. And that's actually done mostly by the adult Gerudo women. And so, yeah, while the parties aren't as lavish as the kings, they sure are a lot of fun, though. I mean, 
you know, all the pomp and circumstance and all the frills and I don't know, I'd just rather go on a really nice hike or hang out with my friends and gossip about, <laughs> you know, or actually, no, just maybe brag about my score at the horseback archery yard, stuff like that, you know. So, and another uh, special Salvatore, you know, uh, another kind of festival is uh, Tatouage. Tatouage, the kings, usually, uh, coronation. And that's, again, a very lavish celebration. <laughs> and there, there is also a celebration, but maybe more on a somber note, for Mirex Telagsu. Mirex Telagsu. You know, a, a funeral. And especially for the king. Vamirex Telagsu Juvatif. Very, very somber occasion. Now, so I'm going to note how those work. So, and everything I just said, basically, it's all hypothetical. So, you take it with a grain of salt, not official, but anyway. So, funerals. And all the stuff that, you know, I not only is it hypothetical, but I also took it from my own vlog on Tumblr. Blog. <laughs> my own blog on Tumblr. I wrote about it quite a while ago. Uh, birthdays and funerals. Two different blogs, but anyway, this is material from that. So I said, just talk about it on a video. So, a wake would be held, friends, family who gather around, share memories of the recently departed, and this is more, uh, this is for the common folk. And after the wake, the body is taken to a pyre, another pingoro, where it will be turned to dotarab, dotarab, ashes. And then ashes are put into a limbs, a, a jar, and the next day it is taken to Desert Colossus for Anoi Selemasu, a final blessing. And the jar of ashes is either carried by a best friend or a family member of the departed. A priestess releases the Navuhasa, soul or spirit, with a blessing, and she bids farewell to the soul as it separates from the remains. So the soul and the remains now are, there's no connection anymore. The soul and the remains are no longer the same. So it's just uh, torab, it's dust, do torab, ash. And then the final goodbyes are said as the mourners leave the temple. And the one who carried the jar, the friend or the relative, and the priestess, they spread the ashes around the outside of Desert Colossus, and, and the body has returned to the earth. Dotarab lame. Dotarab lame. Ashes to sand. Soul is at peace with Vameashi, the sand goddess. And the evening of the funeral, friends and family gather around and have a drink for the departed. And they celebrate her life. And the next of kin or best friend of the deceased is then visited by the priestess, who comforts them, helps them work through the grief. And then life moves on. Now the king's funeral. If you thought that was very, la oh no, it was not lavish. No, it's definitely a ceremony, but not as lavish as the king's. So let me explain. The king's funeral is definitely more of an event. And because he, he was the last male that was born every hundred years, last living male for a while, this is going to be a while before a new one is born, so 
the second in command, or queen by law, she leads the procession. For the king's wake, he is dressed in all his fancy clothing. And the queen by law makes a speech about his achievements in life. And, and like the rest of them, he is burned in a pyre. However, the outfit he wore to his wake will also be burned with him, as well as all his inanimate belongings. But no animals or servants. This this is not ancient Egypt. <laughs> so they 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 they're alive still. They don't go with him to the grave. And the next day, the second in command carries the ashes to the temple, and the priestess says the same blessings as as she would for the normal folk to separate the remains in the soul. And she speaks to the soul and thanks him for his service as king of the Gerudos and for being a great blessing to his mother because him being born was a blessing to her. And then the mourners, they leave after saying, Kiti Pastelagsi. Kiti Pastelagsi. Thank you, Your Highness. They thank him. And then the queen by law and the priestess scatter the ashes around the inside of the temple. And after that, a whole week of festivals celebrating the king's life take place. And work is halted for that whole week. And when the week's over, the second command, the queen by law, has her official tatouage. And, and she's queen. And uh, when she dies, her funeral will probably be the same as the king's. But for now, she rules until the next male heir is born. And if she dies before then, her second in command succeeds her. So, anyway, I, I do apologize that uh, it ended on a bit of a somber note. But that's my hypothesis of how celebrations would work. Now, the birthday is definitely more fun, and the birth of the king, definitely more fun. You know? And quite truthfully, I'm not very comfortable talking about um, funeral practices. And even writing that blog was a little uncomfortable for me. That's, that's true. doesn't seem like it, but it's true. I, I generally do not like funerals. So anyway, well, I, I guess that's it for this, this little, little talk, this little vlog. And if you have any suggestions about what I should talk about next, let me know. And also if, you know, if you have any questions or anything, something I may not have talked about during this vlog, let me know and I'll clear it up. I'll, I'll tell you exactly. You know, I'll tell you what you want to know. All right. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, remember, pastizetze ho zaimav kundai bias, ax arp inhabi promen noma biashkia. Do I have to say it twice? Pastizetze ho zaimav kundai bias. Ax arp inha bi promen noma bi ashkia. Wash your hands for 20 seconds and stay home if you can. And, uh, da kiss, ax da lelu. <laughs>